Well, today's the day for the ride bearing change out for my M6. I've reached uh, 80,000 miles, still running strong, but pushing time. So I figure I might as well do it just for peace of mind. And I got all of the stuff ordered, uh, plus the torque tools and some other things needed to do this job. So we should be pretty well set up. Uh, there's uh, pretty good write-ups on uh, some of the other forums for the uh, S85 engine on uh, what all you need to do to this job. All right, so as far as tools go for the job, that being that I've completed it, it's easier to know what tools to use. So I laid them all out on the table as far as some special ones, but we can go through these and kind of talk about them a little bit, but just your general tools here, you need those, of course. You gotta have your sockets and your extensions and your swivels and all of these things, you know, for all of your different size tools to get to the parts but uh, some odd ones that you may not have in your toolbox are some of these other ones so for example you'll need a 33 millimeter um, socket to crank your uh, crank around as you're doing your different rod bearings so something like that or you might be able to use a crescent wrench but a socket's a lot easier easier to keep on there and just keep a wrench on it as far as taking the engine mount off the standard depth of a socket won't work because the bolt in the middle won't allow you to get on the nut so you need to have you a set of like a impact drivers because they're a little bit deeper so you can see here that'll allow you to get over that nut in the middle or sorry that bolt in the middle and then you can uh, you won't strip your nut out a regular deep well won't work like the deep wells that come on the stock socket sets is not going to work because it's too deep and you got to get into a little angle there so get you a set of impacts with that are a little bit deeper um, and that'll help you out a lot on getting your engine mount nuts off um, as far as this little tool i had to make this because the click wrench that i used for the uh, first step the six newton meter uh, that click wrench i don't have uh, 12 point sockets for the for the quarter inch drive. And so I only have 12 points for the three eighths and for the half inch drive. So I ended up having to make a little adapter because all of my all of my quarter inch drives are six points. So they won't work on the uh, rod bolts. So what you can do, you can either make an adapter like I did for the small uh, quarter drive wrench, or you can try to find a wrench that's a three eighths drive that, that has the low uh, click on it for the six newton meter. I think this one is uh, 20 to 200 inch pounds. So it's in a good range for the six newton meter. Uh, or you can try to find some of these little adapters. I think you can buy them as well. As far as the click wrenches go, you'll need one click wrench for the first step of the uh, six newton meter. And then you'll need another wrench, a bigger wrench for the 20 newton meter. And it's a lot easier if you just go ahead and buy a couple of wrenches because you're going to have to repeat this step over and over if you're using the OE bolts. It wasn't that bad, it just took a little time, but having the two separate uh, click wrenches allowed you just to click with one, set down, click with the other, so it went really fast. And then for the third step of that, you have to do that 130 degree um, angle, torque angle, and so you can get a tool like this really cheap and it fits up on your half inch drive and then you can step it down to the three eighths or if you have a 12 point half inch, you can use that socket. But that'll get you your 130 degrees if you're using the OE bolts. So that's that's what you would need to torque your uh, rod bolts down. As far as the uh, Vanos goes, if you're doing the, the Vanos line replacement, internal line, you'll need to take your Vanos pump out 
which means you have to reset your gear lash. And so to do that, you'll need to pick up one of these little magnetic bases and the magnet will clip onto the uh, balancer on the motor. And so you can set it up, clip to that, and then you'll want to get one of these little uh, dial indicators. So let me show you, I actually marked it on the table, but what you'd be looking for is one, if I can get the camera to show it, you're looking for one that has the, uh, the little indicator. If you see right below the needle, there's two black arrows and it tells you that that distance between the two little black arrows is equal to 0 0.01 millimeter. And the target spec you're looking for is uh, 0 0.06 to 0 0.08 millimeter. So this gauge is probably the least expensive gauge you can get that's gonna allow you to do that. The one that has the, uh, the little dashes at the 0 0.01 millimeter. So they're not very expensive at all. And uh, since we're not gonna do this very often, that, that's a good enough gauge to get for this. But like say on the table right here, if you can see it, there's two little arrows on there and then it tells you that that distance between is equal to 0 0.01 millimeter. So that would be the one that you could get. You can get them more sensitive than that, they just cost more money. So that plus the magnetic base would be what you would set your Vanos pump gear lash with. Um, as far as this little guy, um, I used it, I actually picked this up a bit ago. It's what I used to take the um, band clamps loose on the uh, air intakes and you can slide it in there. You actually don't need a socket. That actually fits the band clamp. So you can slip it up in there, get it all in its orientation, and then you can uh, take those band clamps off real easy with this tool versus having to use a screwdriver or sockets or something like that. Um, these right here, there's four bolts on the uh, oil pan and they're actually uh, Torx bolts and they're up inside some pockets. So you would use your Torx um, bits but the problem you have is that the standard little tool that comes to hold the bit the diameter of that is too big to fit up into those pockets in the oil pan for those four bolts and so your choice would be either grind this one down and get the diameter small enough that it'll fit in there but another option is they do sell these little extensions for like uh, nut drivers and this extension is thinner and this fits perfectly up in there. So if I hold them up together, you can kind of see the diameter of this is smaller. And so you can get these little extensions. They're just little hex ends with the quick releases and uh, get a couple of those in different sizes, like uh, two inch long. And this one's around four or five inch. Combined together, you can get those four bolts out. So that's a real showstopper right there if you can't get those four out of the oil pan. So you'll, you'll need a set of these. These are the uh, Torx sockets. And this is what uh, is used to take the bolt out for the steering shaft that comes down uh, to your power steering rack. So you gotta have a set of those. You also have four bolts on the back of the transmission bell housing that connects up to the oil pan that'll require those. So gotta get a set of those. Uh, it's always handy to have some long extensions. I like these, pick these up at the local cheap uh, tool shop. I like these because they have the, uh, the uh, connector on it so you won't lose your sockets when you go to pull it out. It actually grabs a hold to the socket. So those are nice uh, 12 inch extensions. You can get those pretty cheap. Uh, you'll need another breaker when you go to do your bolt sequence, if you're using the OE bolts, so it's always handy to have a, a breaker to take those back loose to redo the sequence. It's also nice, I use uh, this long ratchet uh, because it's a lot easier to deal with as far as uh, getting you a little bit more torque on your arms instead of just a standard one. But you don't have to have that, you could always just use a cheater bar if you uh, really had to put some torque down on it. Uh, as far as these go, you'll see them in the video. Um, these came in real handy for picking up the Vanos line once I got it all disconnected and been able to grab it down in that little tight spot on top of the motor. So you can reach in there and just grab the top of the Vanos line and pull it out, get it up to the point that you can pull it out real easy. So those were handy. Pick those up at a local uh, low cost tool shop as well. Of course, don't forget your blue uh, thread locker. Now you don't want to use red, you want to definitely use blue so you can get these back off someday. But you got to have your thread locker for your uh, 
uh, oil pan bolts and a couple of other bolts that are external to the motor and then a couple internal like the um, tube that comes up to the oil pump uh, you'll need to get a hammer this is like a dead blow hammer a rubber hammer i don't know if it'll do it or not but this is necessary when you're setting your uh, gear lash on your vanish pump and then a couple others that just make life easier now this is a 10 millimeter and it's one of those ratcheting kind and it came in real handy when doing the uh, 12 bolts that sit it right up above the scavenge pumps on the outside of the oil pan. Uh, those little oil pan bolts were really hard to get to, but you can just put that wrench up in between the scavenge pump and uh, the top of the pan and get to those bolts to take them out. So that saves a lot of time. Not really necessary, but it saved a whole lot of time to do it. And then a bigger version, I didn't have a metric but I use this when taking off the uh, suspension parts like the uh, control arms because a lot of times the ball will spin once you start breaking it loose and this is a 5 8 but I think it's a 16 millimeter bolt or nut that uh, holds that on once you break it loose then you can use this and then the top of the uh, ball has either like a hex on top for a 10, mil 10 millimeter or it's got a Torx so then you can actually put your wrench on that and you'll be able to uh, get those off without any kind of problem. And then last on the list, just for peace of mind, um, I always use plastic gauge and it just gives me kind of a visual feel of uh, how the uh, clearance looks on the bearings. You know, it's not a lot you're gonna do about it at this point. Uh, if you found that it was too tight, you could send your bearings back and get uh, more oversized if necessary. But the bearings I used were fine. We had about a two thousandths clearance and it was checked out by the plastic gauge. So this is more just peace of mind. It's only like six or seven bucks for the plastic gauge. It takes you just a minute to pull them back off plastic gauge them and put them back on there again. And uh, then you got pretty good peace of mind that you, you have a visual indicator of your gap. All right, so tools wise, I think that's about it. Um, other than just your standard tools, screwdrivers, and things like that to get things apart. So for the next part of the video sequence, we'll go into the actual disassembly of the car and working our way all the way down to the uh, rod bearings and also to the uh, internal vanos oil line. And then we'll have the last uh, video in the series. We'll be actually uh, bleeding the vanos and checking that through uh, ISTA. All right, well, thanks for watching.